the normal process of the application. Uh, when we discuss this at a uh, work session, we promise to um, interact with uh, all the, the stakeholders, and that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to um, make sure that everybody is aware of what, uh, we're, what we're looking at, and uh, if they have any questions about what we're doing, we want to answer them. We want to be totally above board on this so there's no confusion, and uh, that's really the purpose of the nice meeting. It's not to make a statement. We've received several letters that want to be read. They won't be read tonight. They'll be read at the public hearing. So this is all about answering questions, and um, Michelle uh, has been kind enough to tape this, and if you'd like your question heard, you'd have to come up here and speak up here so that she can hear the question and then we can respond to it. But the uh, format is going to be that um, um, Adam is going to take us through proposed legislation and changes, and then at that time, um, we'll entertain questions from the folks that are out in the audience. And, and that's really the purpose of this, and that once this is done, and uh, we will then uh, put it on the agenda, and then the, from the, at that point we'll schedule the public hearing. So there's quite a bit more to go here, um, and that's one of the reasons we wanted to do this tonight. We wanted to move this process along, uh, just because uh, there is so many steps involved, and we felt we, it was incumbent upon us to, to, to do what we promised to do, and have this um, public information session. So that's where we're at. And, um, so at that, I'll ask Adam to um, sort of run us through the proposed legislation. Yeah, sure. Uh, I'm going to point to the map and explain what we're actually talking about rezoning here. Uh, North is up. Um, this is Banksville Avenue. This dark line is the Connecticut state line. What the town board has asked me to do is prepare legislation that would implement some of the recommendations that were in the 1996 Comprehensive Plan update. Uh, that, that document, uh, one of the recommendations was to place the properties um, along Banksville Avenue into a residential zoning district, among other uh, recommendations for the Banksville Hamlet, but that was a central part of their recommendations. So what we're talking about rezoning specifically is the area from Finches uh, east to the corner of Roundhouse. Um, the Finches market will go from the GB district to the central business Banksville district. And that use that's, that, would, uh, that exists on the property would, is a permitted use in both uh, the GB district as well as the CBB district. And the CB di district uh, goes north along the west and east sides of Bedford Banksville Road is the commercial district in the Banksville Hamlet. Uh, the properties that are currently along Banksville Avenue are in the GB district. The GB district is a business district that allows quasi-industrial uses, and that's how it's characterized in the, in the comprehensive plan. Uh, and the recommendation is to rezone this area to residential, and it makes a recommendation from anywhere between a half an acre and one acre. Uh, the proposal that the town board asked me to prepare proposes to put this in the R1 half acre district, which uh, on the other side in the Connecticut line is the R20 and uh, essentially equivalent zoning districts. Um, all of the existing commercial uses that are in the GB now would be able to continue in operation uh, as a non-conforming <coughs> use in a residential district. Uh, those uses would not be able to be enlarged, however, uh, or expanded or changed to another um, non-conforming use. And the conforming uses within the R1A district, primarily a single-family residential, however, there are a host of other uses that are permitted, uh, typically by special use permit, like churches or uh, utility substations, there are others, but mainly it's a single family residential district. In a nutshell, that's what's being uh, being proposed <coughs> at this point. I'd just like to stress the fact that this is the recommendation that has been on the books for over <coughs> 30 years. It was in the original comprehensive plan, it was then again recommended uh, in the um, uh, open space study uh, six to eight years ago. Uh, it was also recommended again during the Banksville study. Um, it was as far along as actually the map had been drawn up uh, during the open space study showing this as residential, I believe, um, had actually been created. This is, so this is 
not, not news to anybody who lives over there, I'm sure. Um, and so uh, we're just following the recommendations that have been on, uh, ongoing for many, many years. And um, uh, anything else you want to add? I just wanted to add that um, I prepared a question and answer sheet put on the back table. I don't know if there are any left. I know Ann posted that on the website today. I just prepared this today. Um, that tries to answer some basic questions, what it means to have your property rezoned and what provisions are in the zoning code for uses uh, to continue uh, even if they become non-conforming uses. Um, so I encourage everyone to take a look at that and if they have any specific... Adam, why don't, you, why don't you read the questions you wrote and give the answer. I think that would be helpful in case people can get it. Okay. Well, the first question was what properties are proposed to be rezoned and we covered that, the properties along Banksville Avenue, with the majority of them going into the R1 half A district except for uh, Finches, which would go into the CBB. Uh, why is the town proposing the rezoning? As I've stated, it's implementing the recommendation of the comprehensive plan, like Supervisor Horgan uh, indicated. Uh, I currently have a business on my property that will not be permitted after the rezoning. Will I be able to continue the business after the property is placed in the R one half A zone? And uh, non-conforming uses would be uh, may be continued. However, the non-conforming uses can't be enlarged, increased, or intensified. Uh, I currently have a business on my property that will not be permitted after the rezoning. Will I be able to sell my business property after the property is placed into the R1 half A district? So the answer there is as long as the non-conforming use continues, the use can continue even in the case of a change in ownership. However, the same provisions that apply to expanding the use uh, are still in place, so it can't be expanded, but uh, certainly could be sold and could operate how it's operating right now. Um, Another question, I currently have a business on my property that will not be permitted after the rezoning. I know that I can, can continue my non-conforming use, but can I change my non-conforming use to another non-conforming use? Uh, and an example I gave was, if I have a retail business now, can I change it to a restaurant? And the answer to that is no, you can't. You can't change from one non-conforming use to another non-conforming use. Um, currently have a business on my property that will not be permitted after rezoning. Um, I know that I can continue my non-conforming use, but if my non-conforming use stops, can I start the non-conforming use again? The answer there, there's a section of the town code that deals with this issue, and it says if the non-conforming use ceases for any reason for more than six months, or is changed to conforming use, any future use must be in conformity with the permitted uses. So essentially, <coughs> it has to remain continuously operating for for no more than six months to continue that non-conforming use. Um, if a property is rezoned to R1 half A, and my property is less than a half an acre, can I still build on that property? And the answer is yes. If the lot was legally created, uh, the property is exempt from the change in lot area requirements. So if you have a lot and it's less than a half an acre, there are three parcels that are actually proposed that are, are in, that have to deal with that condition. Uh, 16 Banksville Avenue, 24 Banksville Avenue, and 26 Banksville Avenue. Uh, 16 Banksville, uh, the lawnmower repair shop being the smallest. It's a quarter acre. But those Excuse lot. Me, that's not the lawnmower repair shop. Oh, I'm sorry. So that's what's. Okay, that's, that's the automotive, automotive repair shop. Automotive repair, 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 yes, you're right. I apologize. Um, so those, those properties, if they're smaller than a half an acre, can still be developed residentially, and that's. Uh, that comes out of New York State town law, that they specifically exempt that minimum, minimum lot area requirement for a property that's rezoned. And um, I think that's, that's really it. If there are any other questions, you know, we can try to answer those now. I, I don't have a sign up sheet. I just wanted to make this, it was you know, basically supposed to be informal. So if anybody has a question, I'd like to come up and ask it, and um, we'll answer it for you. Work session you were doing. He had one proposal. Don't even bother. Leave it alone. Then there was another one to change it to CB. Right. There was like three different. Yeah, proposals. we could go, we could go over those. Uh, well, yeah, the first that, one. You should let everybody else know about. Can you explain what that is? Yeah, the, the first one is obviously do nothing, right? No change. And Clark indicates that that if you did that, that would be inconsistent with the comprehensive plan because it talks about doing this. Uh, the other two are really hybrids, whether, 
where you can try to implement the, the recommendations of the comprehensive plan in a slightly different way. So the, the, proposal, the, pro, the proposal to rezone it to residential is the closest to the recommendations in the comprehensive plan. But there's really a sliding scale that the town board could look at. And one of them might be changing the, the types of uses that are permitted in the GB district um, and trying to get to a place that's closer to the recommendation of the comprehensive plan. And then really that third alternative is creating a new zoning district or a hybrid zoning district that, um, that would create some mixed use, potentially having uh, businesses on the first floor and residences on the second, but taking a look at what uses uh, are compatible with the neighborhood or not. So that, that's the range of options the board has to, to deal with. We also have another question. We've got to come up so we can get you on tape. And could you give us your name, please? Bob Parkour, Banks and Alone Equipment. Why residential half acre zoning? What are you going to do with the septic? Do you plan a public sewage treatment plan over there sometime? No, public utilities um, are not being proposed for the hamlet. Uh, yeah. yeah, any redevelopment on the property is, would obviously have to comply with the health department standards. Uh, so on the smaller lots, yes, you may be talking about smaller septic systems like a two bedroom house, not a five or six. Right. Definitely. Well, that, that's a major, major concern. I. <laughs> I'd rather have a little business there with no showers and stuff than 14 houses if you went to half acre zoning on there with no public septic, no public water. Yeah, and particularly on the smaller lots, you know, those would probably be good candidates for continuing the non-conforming use there. Yeah. Now is the master plan the Bible or is that a guideline? Anything that the town board adopts has to be consistent with that comprehensive plan. So they can't adopt something that's that's not in keeping with that plan. Yeah. Well, we desperately, desperately need businesses in Banksville. There's absolutely nothing right now. We we have somewhat of a hardware store, not a home center like we had. No one is championing for us to get a grocery store over there. Um, we don't have a gas station. Understand the stuff behind that and agree with it. But uh, we're hurting for volunteer firemen over there and stuff. We have to support business in Banksville, not start taking it away. I'm, I'm sorry, I feel like that way. I would be uh, more than willing to, uh, you know, clean up the front of my shop a little bit voluntarily. In the 31 years that I've been there, no one's come over there and told me, you know, straighten up a little bit, you look poor, or anything like that. I, I believe we can settle on a business section over there on Banksville Avenue with appropriate development and not have to go to residential and lose that business. I, you're condemning my place to be, and me, to be a lawnmower shop for the rest of my life. My kids have talked about doing something a little more retail and according to this I'm out. So you would have to compensate me the difference in what I'm going to lose if I've got 31 years of equity in that lawnmower shop and then I can't do anything with it anymore. You guys are going to pay me. I'm sorry. Um, Adam, can I ask you a question? If it's retail, can it stay retail to retail, but just a different type of retail store? Sure. Right. Well, it's retail so, and service right now, so. What yeah. Would, what would his I could do something else say? retail there? Um, I don't think you would qualify for retail space. You wouldn't consider what you're doing there as retail. I do retail power equipment. Well, I'd have to. Look, we'd have to discuss that yeah. specifically. What's going on there? And, yeah. You know what it would be categorized. Well, I'm hoping you think about it, and I'm hoping you'll think about supporting the business in Banksville and keeping some type of business over there with appropriate development. I live there. I don't want to pollute my well, make the street look horrible and stuff. And I think we can all work together to get something done over there to make it look a little nicer and stuff, and still keep our business property. We had that environment, <laughs> Santo Jankarello. I'm also a property owner on Banksville Avenue. Hey, you, come on up. We, so I know we had some impacts done. How come any, nothing else has been offered but the worst scenario right here? What's the reason behind this? Uh, just exactly what we just said. We went by the comprehensive plan. But, you, but right now, you should have given us more than one option, which you're not doing right now. 
Well, I believe um, we did dis the, the study did discuss different options, and that was the, this is the option that. Well, shouldn't it be our decision, basically speaking? Though, being we've been there for so long, I mean, we don't have one generation. We got some five generations there. Well, that's how exactly, do you feel about it? That's exactly why we're having this meeting, so we can hear the um, first. Hearing, hearing it is one thing; doing something about it is something completely different. That's that's what the public. I oppose this whole thing to completely. Um, Adam, could you give a little more description of what a business that could be existing there, if it's a service business, what it would entail of being able to exist or retail to retail? Because I think, you know, people may feel a little bit of uh, more of a stretch of what they could do with the property then. Could you explain some of the business categories of, that we have that it would be non-conforming? Right. Well, there are... If you if you switch the type of business, the name of the business, or for instance what you're selling, that would be that's not a change of use. Uh, so there are broad categories of use that we have in the code. For instance, office, medical office, retail, personal service establishments, uh, automotive repair. Those are all different uses. And those, what happens inside of a class of use, the code doesn't doesn't uh, permits those changes. So if you're selling one day um, uh, trinkets and the next day you're selling jewelry or selling tools, it's all the same use per the, per the town code. But if it were to go from retail to restaurant, that's a different use category. Question, sir? Uh, my name is Peter Miller. I operate North Castle Automotive. I'm one of those small lots. Um, I think if I'm different from everyone here, it's in this sense. I have spoken at great length with people on both sides of this issue. I can see at least two dozen customers here now, and uh, you know, people's cars break, and I'm the guy they bring it to. It seems to me that, and I'm echoing Bob Farquhar in a way, Sandy in a way, um, having looked at the recommendations from F.P. Clark, there are essentially four recommendations. The discussions I've had, and the last meeting, by the way, that we had last week of the Banksville Business Association did discuss this at length, and I, I thought very reasonably, um, seems to be that the most draconian <coughs> leap is being made, going from GB and <coughs> jumping over other viable possibilities. It's about as big a leap, in fact, it is as big a leap as you can make. My talks with the folks, folks here know them, they talk to me, <laughs> seem to be that what the residents want is really a prohibition against the quasi-industrial you spoke about. We're fine with that. The folks I've spoke to in the Banks Open Association are essentially fine with that. I don't see or hope that this becomes contentious which, you know, you can see things boiling a little bit over here and there, and people do have self-interest at heart. It's human nature. But it seems to me there are remedial things that can be done, and you're the folks that can do them. My last point I'll make is this. Going from GB, for all of us, to residential is very punitive in some cases, but only to the people who are being rezoned. As far as I know, we've done nothing wrong. I'm not saying you say we are, but we would have to make sacrifice. We're willing, I believe, it's my opinion, to make some sacrifice from GB, but to leap to R1A seems to be, well, throwing out the whole baby with the bath for Just my opinion. Thanks a lot. <coughs> Anybody else have a question? Um, my name is Donna Santoro, and we have property on both uh, Bedford Banksville Road and on Banksville Avenue. And I strongly oppose what you're, you're proposing. I think you're just trying to Everybody on that avenue that has property is going to be hurt, drastically. 
and I don't think it's necessary. Thank you. Do you have a, another question? Hello? Question? Absolutely. Yes. Please come up. I'm Patricia Sawyer, a lifelong resident of Banksville. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> um, if this rezoning goes through, what are the property tax implica implications going to be um, for the rezoning? I mean, are everybody's taxes going to go sky high because it's now residential or vice versa? Um, I don't know. What's going on? Okay, that's a good question. Adam, I don't think it matters. Uh, yeah, I mean, the assessor. We can't hear it back here. But the, oh. the question was uh, what are, if the rezoning goes through, what will be the impacts to? Uh, uh, the taxes on the property and uh, the person to really answer that is the assessor it's my understanding um, that it's going to be based upon the land and the improvements on the property and I don't know if it necessarily relates to the zoning of it I don't know how much weight yeah I don't think that goes and actually if the, the non-conforming yeah. uses continue there Correct. will be no change at all right <laughs> I'm sitting here and I have one question for you. I mean, these people have been doing business here for generation, generation, generation. And with the issues this town has, why are you choosing this fight? And how is this going to make someone in Whippoorwill's life better or someone in Windmill's life better? The only people it's going to hurt is going to hurt the people that are trying to do business on this street. How is this going to make the life in North Castle better by taking people's businesses away, reducing the amount of value they have on their land? Answer that question for me. I, I don't get it. I mean, this has been like, it's not even like, so if someone's offended by the mowers in front of Herbie's shop, or the cars in front of North Castle Automotive, you don't have to drive that road. You can go out the other road. So don't be offended by it, but let them keep their business. No one's offended. But he did ask you a question I would like you to answer for It's actually a very simple question. It's not really, um, um, I, I guess you haven't been around for the last two and a half years, where the, the residents of this area had an incredible battle trying to protect their, their, their property. And we're looking for a solution to something that's that two and a half, three decades old. And we're not taking uh, businesses away, as you already heard. Um, and it, it's an overall improvement of the whole town. So it, it doesn't it does make a quality of life in the entire town if better if we do this right. Town, why don't you clean the sides of the roads if you're so concerned about the look of Banksville? I mean, we don't see anyone out there. No one. And you're concerned this? I'm sorry, I don't see it. Yeah. I don't know. We've answered everybody's questions. So, as I said, we'll be putting this on the uh, town board uh, agenda, and, and then will it be? Uh, 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 I do. I'm sorry. I do have a question. Okay. Uh, my name is Jeff Brown, and I am not a business owner in the town of Bankville, uh, but a resident. And the question I have is: uh, This is a proposed legislation. Can you tell us? I'll wait. Um, can you tell us what the mechanism, what mechanisms exist? for changing, if that's what needs to happen, and that's what is, is meant to happen, to change the proposed legislation. There are people who would like to see it altered in some way. There are other people who would not. But what, what's the mechanism involved? Right now, this was supposed to be fact-finding, and it clearly is. There will be public hearings, but oftentimes the public hearings take place after the proposal has come to a point where it's a matter of this way or no way. So tell us how we might alter things if, in fact, that's what cooler minds would have us do. Thank you, Jay. Well, I think that we've um, tried to solicit a number of different suggestions. Obviously, the money was spent on a study. Uh, we reviewed it in a work session. We went over the different uh, possibilities. Um, the discussion was that this was a way to do it that was probably, we felt, was the most uh, uh, fair, that would retain the use of the property as what it is now. Uh, in some cases, it might actually improve the property values um, by subdividing lots into multiple uh, residents. Um, you know, that's, that's, again, this is an informational meeting. 
and uh, there will be a lot more uh, process ahead of us, including the public hearing. We're, uh, we'll be soliciting input from, from everybody and their ideas. Uh, it's not carved in stone, but we certainly feel that this is uh, based on the studies and the recommendations, this is one of the most viable processes for the uh, way to go. And um, that's, that's why that we've chosen this course to present. Um, one of the things I thought might be helpful is for the residents, the commercial and the uh, residential people, to understand some of our different zoning choices. Um, there's a little bit of a menu of what we have in town, like CB, CBA, GB, um, OD district, you know, some of these things, Adam, I think you might want to explain to them what the vast differences are and why we're coming out to this, because if there is some other choices out there, then they could say, well, of course that didn't work, or maybe that could have worked. Could you do some description of what di uh, distinguishes GB compared to the CB or an OD or the uh, residential one half acre? Well, generally there are three classes. Um, of districts of four. Uh, you have office districts, industrial districts, residential districts, and then we have various multifamily districts. Um, within those broad categories, there are subsets. So we have residential districts that go from 5,000 square feet minimum lot requirements. That's in North White Plains where we have sewer and water infrastructure, obviously. Uh, up to four acres zoning, which is a good portion of the eastern district uh, without water and sewer and most rural. Uh, we have uh, zoning dis office zoning districts that allow for a combination of residence and office right across the street in a historic district to um, campus office where we have IBM, Swissery, and MBIA. Um, and then there are various commercial districts depending on the hamlet, the CB, is in North White Plains and in Armonk, uh, and the CBB is in Banksville. Yeah, the office district is one that's kind of interesting. It's uh, on McDonald Avenue on the way to the schools that was changed a while back from residential to OD. It's one of our uh, OD districts, and it worked out quite successful. We could have residents, and you could have what are considered, you have to be a licensed professional to have uh, open up in an OD district which means an architect, engineer, or a mortgage company, something like that. It's quite an interesting uh, zoning possibility if there was some mixed use that you know we ever wanted to consider. Uh, is there any other highlights of an OD district you could think of? Um, well, generally the PBO district, that, that's exactly what's allowed in, in that district. Um, that you have to be the licensed professional in order to be there, but you could have a resident and then an architect's office next door. So, um, but retail is not allowed in an OD district, so that's the fallback on that. Um, so we don't benefit from this at all. Well, uh, it, you know, there, if there's any, it there, be brought up right now. I'll be honest with you. Well, because I think when you're going through picking maybe a hybrid type zoning, where you know we want to satisfy you and satisfy the residents. Maybe you probably should understand, I mean, I'm fairly familiar with what all our zonings are, but a lot of people don't know them. And I think if you know why we're narrowing down or what we could narrow it down to, it's only by you knowing the choices that are out there. Um, you know, we want to satisfy the residents, the maybe uh, an architects or a retail. We want to see what our choices could be. And I think by educating the residents and the commercial businesses of what their options are, we'll come to the best solution. That's the way I look at it. Excuse me. It seems to me, I appreciate the, the explanation, but it seems to me that the board has already gone ahead and made the suggestion to go straight to residential R1 and not go with any of the hybrid options. So are you putting back on the table um, hybrid options? I don't think the town board has come to any conclusion on anything. We're but that's the R1 is the presentation and saying that we're going to go from here to there. That's what's on the table tonight, well, the correct? presentation was given to us from our master plan when we had a person come in front of us and tell us our options, and that was one of the options they did mention to us. But that's the but only one that's not... really been proposed, and that was the, to Robert's point earlier, those others weren't, aren't being commented on. Well, just so you understand, I'm still in an exploratory stage, as I feel everybody has an open mind to this, so I think we have to keep an open mind in order to come up with proper solutions. Okay, well, because the commentary and the question and answers are strictly going from current 
to residential, not with any alternative well, options, and I think that needs to be made clear to the population. Well, that's why I'm trying to educate as best of my knowledge of what the different options are out there, so we can have an open communication on it. The reason that was presented is that that was the option that was presented as the best solution by the consultants based on the comprehensive plan. So oh, 30 years ago. And, and, and businesses and, and uh, uh, environment has changed. Six years ago years. and as of yeah. last year, um, you know, and many, many other times. So that was why we went with this presentation because that was uh, thought to be the best option. Yes, sir. The only thing we can ask is that you keep an open mind. The Banksville Community House deserves to be in a moderate business area. You can't put residential places. I've lived next to that building for almost 57 years, and it's not nice all the time. Uh, there's parking issues. Every ball game, I allow them to park in the front of my store to get them off the street. You guys don't hear the complaints because they go to Greenwich. There's noise issues with the building. It certainly deserves to be not in a totally residential area. The firehouse certainly belongs, it needs to be in a strong commercial area. You see what happened when they moved the Armand firehouse, the resistance and everything else. We get it from the horn, they get it from the siren. These are tools that we need to get out. We're saving per station, I know you like to save, $1.3 million a year is what it costs the town of Greenwich to house one house, four men, 24-7, that's not fire station and firehouse maintenance, it's not truck and truck maintenance, it's purely payroll. And we're saving the town with the three firehouses here over $3 million. Support business in Banksville, appropriate business. We don't want an asphalt plant on Banksville Avenue or a concrete plant. We want small mom and pop businesses on there. I will volunteer to clean up the front of my store to make it look as nice as I can. You have to understand that my stuff has to come out every day so I can go to work. At night it will be back inside. I will get behind my fence what I can get behind it. But please consider not getting rid of all the commercial business on, on Banksville Avenue. <coughs> let's work on appropriate development lot by lot. If bulldozers don't belong there, let's talk about it. We can't put bows on them. There's only so nice we can make them look. But there are things that we can voluntarily do where we don't need to be forced to do or forced to change to make our town a little better. Thank you. Any other questions? One more. We don't want to do the six bucks of the and we had a deli. I went out with the place and was a job. I did a lot of work. After work, I go to that place and do some work. Two hours, one hour, after work. Now, what's my money? This business will be a nothing. Money throw on the street? Is it fair for you, people? Tell me. Now, have the park, people park there. I have a sign over there, and everybody park there. Convenient, right? I had a friend of mine, I have a bus. I had a coffee truck. They sent me a letter, say, no, I'm out overnight. I paid $12,000 for that little pizza. <coughs> it's a fair, this. We gotta go to war on this day, it's up. So I have to say. Thank you. Yeah, Mark Lazarus. Um, I know it's supposed to be just questions, but I just got to make one statement. I apologize, everybody, because all the questions I keep hearing from a lot of people, I don't think anybody here, and maybe they're not understanding it, as I understand it, as you presented it, we're not trying to change and tell the people that are there they can take away the business and move, okay? We love your lawnmowers out there. We have no problem with lawnmowers. You don't have to clean up anything. It's fine the way it is. Yeah, I, I understand that, but if they change me down to residential, and my kids come out there and say, Dad, we want to do something with animals, let's sell some pet food and accessories and stuff, I'm done. I'm done. I got 31 years of equity in that building, building that business, the, the tens of 
customers that I have would be all gone unless I want to stay there breaking my knuckles every day. It's gone after that. That's why right, we've got to come to some kind of compromise to keep business in Banksville. I'm sorry. We have to do that. Yeah. I mean, most, a lot of these places I go to. Okay. Is that a question, sir? Do you have a question? Because no, no, it's not. It's not. Okay. Well, like I said, we'll have a. It's going to be a full public hearing, and and that's the time really to make the statement because then it'll be actually on official televised. It'll be documented. Um, so, um, if everybody has um, has answered their questions, I'll be glad to uh, take any more. But if you, it's it's basically the informational session. Of, it's already on the same page, and we go to the next step. And we'll be soliciting input from everybody, and we'll be glad to work with any ideas you have. Okay, so thank you all for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just to make a quick statement, I apologize for getting here late. I had a meeting that ran long. Um, excuse me. Um, and, you know, from the resident standpoint, I've spoken to a lot of residents out there, and to be genuine about it, I haven't spoken to any residents out there that, that want to negatively impact the businesses out of there. And I think that's that's an important fact. But obviously they've had concerns and they've been vocal about those concerns about certain uses. And you made a good point of there are certain uses that some that the businesses out there probably wouldn't mind taking out of the code. And I've used this a lot and I give Jeff wherever he is a lot of credit. He came to the town probably over two years ago and talked about is there a hybrid? Is there a way that you could um, make it work for the residents so you can address what their concerns are, but not completely dramatically impact the businesses that are there and the, the property that they own. So I think that does deserve some more conversation and investigation, and it may have been brought up already. I'm sure it was raised before that the pre-existing non-conforming um, piece of this is you're not going to stop being able to operate your businesses. but if that's the case and your children did want to change slightly, that could prevent them from doing that. So I do think it warrants a little more investigation to see. I've gone through every use on the GB. There's a lot of them that shouldn't be. A lot, most of them shouldn't be so technically that be modified, allowed. correct? But, but, yes, but there are some that maybe could be modified so it doesn't at all negatively impact the environment out there or traffic or anything like that, but let's, let's pay attention to some of the needs of the business owners out there who are also the property owners and try to blend that with the needs of the residents. And like I said, they've been very clear. But to be, to, to be honest, I haven't spoken to any residents out there that have anything negative to say about the, the businesses out there. They, they utilize some of those businesses as well. But you know, there's no, no decision made tonight. And like the supervisor said at the public hearing, uh, there'll be more dialogue around it, and we could even work in advance of that to see are there some uses that have no negative impact on the environment or traffic or anything, but that would address maybe what your concerns as a property owner would be, which is, is there a, a slight variation to the R one half A that would address some of those things, and to Jeff's point from a couple of years ago, is there some uses that could be allowed that wouldn't uh, negatively impact uh, the residents in the residential area. So that's all I wanted to say. We'll talk more about it at the public hearing. And again, I apologize for getting here late. I'm sorry to the, uh, the last the last question. Somebody has to be last, right? Anyway, uh, question: I, I, How can the town bring these two opposing uh, points together? And I think that would be a, a wonderful service uh, on the part of the town to try to provide some leadership to find a common ground between the two points of view, which can be a, so that could be a win-win for both. I the, think that's what we're trying to do. Okay. The Land Use Study Committee and not the Open Space Study Committee is the basis for the information. And the Clark studies go back into the 70s. But also, there hasn't been water contamination in the Banksville area in spite of many of the businesses being there for a long period of time. So what we're trying to do is set things up to prevent a future problem. And I think everybody would like to see that happen. And the question is, finally, how is the town going to facilitate and provide the leadership to do that? And I wasn't going to say anything until Larry just said what he had to say. <laughs> to set the record straight and 
I believe there has been three episodes of water contamination in Banksville. One was the Getty Station, and I know you go far enough back for that, Larry. And that's and that resulted in contamination. The other was the cleaners. And that resulted and, and that resulted in contamination. Um, and there was a third one more recently that resulted in water contamination. Let's so well, then we need public water and public septic. All those Get your people. checkbook out. That's <laughs> <laughs> your checkbook. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much, Gregory, for coming. <laughs>